from Sketch, and welcome to my cozy corner of art. I'm glad you're watching today. Today I wanted to talk to you about something that is important to me, and something that I've wanted to talk about for a while. Some of you may or may not know this about me, but I am autistic, and even though I've only been recently diagnosed, it is an important part of me and has drastically affected me all my life. Be it my sensory issues, executive dysfunction, emotional regulation, or any of the other countless ways autism affects my life. So today I wanted to talk specifically about my autistic special interests and the way they have influenced me, how they have affected my anxiety, and despite all the challenges I have faced, how I am working to grow past my fears. So sit back, get yourself a warm drink and a snack, and let's discuss special interests, everything I have experienced relating to these. And please note, I am not the best research in the specifics of these mechanisms, even though I go through them. So while I will be explaining everything to the best of my ability, I will be linking a few videos and articles in the description that may help explain this topic a little better than I can. Before actually discussing special interests and hyperfixations, I wanted to express the difference between them and typical likes and hobbies. While all of these terms depend on a person's likes and passions, the biggest difference I feel is the intensity of these interests. When it comes to special interests and hyperfixations, there is an innate passion that cannot be shut off and can be considered an intense state of being rather than just something you like. It tends to come with a strong desire to know literally everything there is to know about the things that you love. They are considered obsessive and extreme fixations, while hobbies and interests are more so things that are enjoyed and consumed. Something that brings you joy, but not in a way where you become engrossed and it becomes all-encompassing. With that distinction made, let's now discuss special interests and hyperfixations, what they are and their differences. Special interest is a term used by autistic people to describe an intensive focus on specific topics. Hyperfixations, on the other hand, is a term used by most neurodivergent people, though it is commonly associated with ADHD and is seen as an extreme state of focus and fixation. Both of these terms are extremely similar, though they are not the same, and are different according to an individual's experience. Specifically, special interests are an extreme focus on a specific area or topic. This can be something more vast, like animation or video games, or something smaller and more focused, such as a specific show or certain game. Special interests can feel all-encompassing, and sometimes they can be all a person thinks about, to the point where it can exclude other interests or work that needs to be done. These interests can be long-lasting, lasting up to weeks, months, and even years. For me, special interests affect me quite strongly. It'll be all I can think about, mostly all I can draw, and all I'll talk about. And it will be hard to focus on work that should be done. This is extremely hard, especially during school. And on that topic, I was bullied heavily throughout school, especially during middle school, for my special interests. During elementary, I was in a small school where I had classes with almost the exact same classmates from second grade until fifth grade. I knew almost everyone, and almost everyone knew me. I was picked on from time to time, and most of the class didn't really like me or barely tolerated me. But for the most part, everyone was okay, and I openly expressed my interests. Though people could get upset with me for focusing so intensely on my specific interests or make fun of specific things I liked, it was hard connecting to people, even friends, a good portion of the time. I remember having a lot of anxiety when I talked about my interests, and I was scared of people judging me for being too kiddy and childish, even though at the time we were all around eight to 10 years old and literally small children. But overall, there was little bullying or harassment I saved, or at least that I knew of, since it became hard for me to actually realize when I go through something that is actually as bad as the situation was. 
However, after fifth grade, my family and I moved across the country, so transitioning into sixth grade and middle school was incredibly stressful and difficult. I was desperate to make friends, but I was seen as stupid and childish from everyone, including my quote-unquote friends. I had an intense special interest in My Little Pony for years at that point, and while it had always been there, it became more prevalent here. I was constantly talking about and drawing ponies. Nearly everyone judged me for it, and people I considered my friends would bully me for it. I was mocked and looked down on. I faced other forms of bullying around this time too, both because of other ways my auto autism affects me and other unrelated reasons. But to stay on topic, I won't discuss that. After sixth grade, I changed schools. It wasn't because of the bullying, but that was a large deciding factor. This year, I decided I wouldn't talk about my interests without knowing if the person I was talking to liked the content as well. And if they didn't, I would actually pretend to dislike the things I was very passionate about. It was in this year, seventh grade, where my anxiety and depression had started to really take a toll on me. I felt alone and I felt like I wasn't allowed to like my favorite things. By the end of this year, I stopped liking ponies completely, fearing bullying and judgment to the point where I ended up hating one of my favorite things. In eighth grade, my depression and anxiety had been at its worst point. And at this point, I talked even less about my special interests. Instead, they stayed in my phone or in my sketchbook, safe from the judging eyes of everyone around me. Once high school started, I talked to considerably less people and would never talk about my interests until somebody else brought them up. I would spend most days buried in my sketchbook, alone with my special interests. At this point, I was too scared to talk about my special interests and fear of judgment, and I mostly talked to a single person about them, since they shared these interests with me. About halfway through high school, however, I decided that I wanted to be happy, and I wanted to enjoy things that made me happy without feeling shame, and that was the start of my journey, too. While it's hard to overcome fears and anxiety that comes from a past of being judged and bullied for having special interests, one important reminder is that your happiness is important. Regardless of what other people may think, you deserve to be happy, no matter what brings you that happiness. I made a conscious decision to make myself comfortable and happy with myself and what I like. I let myself indulge in my interests. I let myself revisit things I used to enjoy. I displayed my stuffed animals instead of hiding them in my closet. I let myself truly be me and it was truly freeing and joyful. But while it's easy to just say, I'm me and I like what I like, it's a lot harder to put into practice, especially around other people, isn't it? While in the privacy of my own space, I am happy with me and what I like. Being around people makes this so much harder. The anxiety comes crawling back, past trauma whispers and insecurities. It can become scary to express yourself again, especially if you if you like something that is commonly looked down on. A good example is a recent interest of mine, Sung the Hedgehog. This franchise brings me so much joy and happiness. I love the characters and the designs. It's wonderful to me and I could possibly spend hours talking about it. But as most probably know, the Sonic fan base doesn't exactly have the best reputation. People constantly look down on the franchise and harshly judge everything that ever comes out of it, and it seems common to think that the fan base itself as deplorable and cringy. So when I started to become invested in the franchise, my anxiety picked up yet again. I felt like nobody wanted to see me posting this stuff about on my story. I felt like once I told people how much I like Sonic, they would start judging me all over again, and it sucked. And it hurts to think that way. It becomes isolating, thinking that nobody cares and nobody wants to hear about what you're interested in. But being in a mindset like that isn't healthy, and it surely doesn't help you. Judgment can be harsh, but at the end of the day, that's another person's problem, and they shouldn't be allowed to make it your problem as well. People shouldn't make you feel bad for liking something, 
And it is hard to get past these thoughts and challenges that have been with you for so long. So how do you get past that? There are a few things I try to keep in mind when that fear starts building up. One, take time to truly just enjoy the media that you like. Don't think of what others think of it. Don't think about what they may think of you. Just enjoy your thing. Two, remember that these are things that you genuinely love. Why should anyone take that away from you? They don't like it, they, they don't have to. But you're still gonna sit in your little corner enjoying your content and they can't take that away from you. And three, stick to people who make you happy. People who show interest in the things you care about and people who don't look down on you for expressing your interests. If they can't do that, they may not be worth surrounding yourself with. Special interests are a large focus on something you are passionate about. It is something that brings joy and pleasure and it is incredibly beneficial for an autistic person's mental health. Despite that, there's an innate part of society that wants to push against that and it wants to sniff out that joy your special interests give. The fear and rejection that others can hurt, especially when it feels like they are attacking something you love and adore. But at the end of the day, you are responsible for your own happiness and your happiness alone. They can't take that from you. It's never easy to overcome bullying and trauma that comes from it, but it's necessary to heal from. It's something you have to grow beyond. It's important for your own happiness and it's not bad to enjoy what you love. I'm hoping to start a discussion with this video. If you have anything you would like to add, personal experiences, questions, or anything else you would like to add, feel free to add a comment. I'll try to respond to any comments I'll see. Thank you for listening to this video essay. If you're watching until the end, that means a lot. I enjoyed this project and I think I'd like to make more videos similar to this one down the line. Are there any topics you'd like to see me discuss in the future? Let me know down in the comments as well. If you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like and maybe subscribe to see more from me. Thank you for coming to my little corner of art. Have a nice evening and take care.